The Boltzmann Factor. This is the fifth video in my series of thermal physics videos. What is the Boltzmann Factor and what do we use it for? So this is a, a graph showing the distribution of energy amongst the particles in a system. It might be the particles in a gas and looking at it you'll see that the some particles don't have very much energy. There's a big bulge around kind of the middle of the graph and then it goes down looking very exponential goes down some particles have lots and lots of energy uh, at any particular point in time the energy of a particle uh, will have a certain value but it will change as it's colliding with its neighbors so any particular particle isn't going to stay with the same energy it's continuously gaining and losing energy doing its random walk thing it's interesting also in computer simulations, if you give each particle in, a, in an ideal gas the same amount of energy, but then you let them collide with each other and they share this energy between them in collisions, pretty soon you end up with a, a shape that looks like this, a distribution that looks like this. It's called a Boltzmann distribution. Okay, what difference does temperature make? Well. If we increase the temperature of the system, what happens is that the peak moves towards the right, but then the whole graph is flattened because the, the area of the graph has to stay the same. So at higher temperatures, there's a lower peak to the graph, but there's a, a wider distribution of energies. If I add KT, now KT is the average energy, we saw that it's a, a way of estimating the average energy of a system, then KT is actually after the peak because the area either side has to be the same and all of the particles to the right of KT here, all of those particles have at least average energy. So the particles to the left have less than average and the particles to the right have more than or at least more than average energy. At least average energy, I beg your pardon. And some of them have an awful lot more. Okay, for example, this grey shaded area here, these particles have lots of energy. There's not very many of them. They have KT, which is the average, plus epsilon. And this little epsilon represents what we call an additional amount of energy, additional energy. And these particles have KT plus epsilon. They have lots of energy. And these particles are the ones that we are usually interested in. Why? Because they make things happen. Well, what kind of things do they make happen? A very good example is uh, water evaporating. Uh, water boils at 100 degrees centigrade, but puddles evaporate at much, much lower temperatures. Why is this? Now, before we get mathematical about it, basically what's happening is that there is a distribution of energies and a very small fraction of the particles in the puddle have enough energy to escape. They have the additional energy required to break their bonds and to escape from the liquid and to become a vapor. A very small fraction of the particles. And then once they have escaped, then the other particles in the puddle are banging into each other, elastic collisions, and they'll be replaced. And then those energetic particles will escape and eventually all of the puddle will evaporate. It's called an activation process. It's a process which happens due to a very small fraction of very energetic particles. And if we can calculate that fraction, then we can work stuff out. Perhaps we might be able to work out the rate, how quickly the puddle will evaporate. Okay, so let's get mathematical now. There's a, a quantity called the Boltzmann factor, F with a subscript B, FB. Now, what is the Boltzmann factor? It's a fraction. It's a fraction of the particles that have this additional energy. It's the number of particles which have the additional energy divided by the number of particles which have at least average energy. So it's N epsilon over NKT. 
it's looking at the the graph it's the particles in the shaded area divided by the particles in from kt onwards okay so it's it's n epsilon over n kt the number of particles with it with at least kt plus epsilon over the number of particles with with at least kt I mentioned before that after kt it, it looks very much like an exponential function and it is the Boltzmann factor is equal to e to the minus epsilon over kt and that's how we can work out what the fraction of particles which have a certain amount of additional energy is. Here's a, a straightforward example, we'll look at a trickier one later. Calculate the average energy of the water molecules in a puddle at 293 Kelvin, which is obviously about 20 degrees centigrade. If the energy required for a molecule to escape from the puddle is that, calculate the Boltzmann factor for these molecules at this temperature. I'll give you a chance to stop the video and have a go at that yourself. Right, well, that's long enough. So the average energy, we're going to use this estimate kT equals, so Boltz, Boltzmann's constant times 293, 4.1 times 10 to the minus 21, and then e to the minus epsilon over kT works out 1 times 10 to the minus 7. And that basically means that one in 10 million molecules will have enough energy to escape. The Boltzmann factor depends on temperature. Uh, if you increase the temperature, then the Boltzmann factor gets bigger. And that's because the fraction of particles which have enough energy to do whatever gets bigger. Okay, uh, for example, puddles evaporate quicker on warmer days uh, if the temperature is greater, then the fraction of particles which have enough energy to escape is greater. And you should recognize this graph of how the Boltzmann factor varies with temperature. Here's some other examples of activation processes. These are the ones that are mentioned on the OCR specification. Changes of state, as in a liquid evaporation. Thermionic emission. Cathode. That's called thermionic emission. Ionization, um, conduction in semiconductors. This is why thermistors, why their resistance gets less at higher temperatures because more uh, conducting particles become mobile. And viscous flow. Uh, why does treacle flow? Because there are enough molecules which have enough energy to break their bonds. Okay, so here's a, a smelly example for you to have a go at. I'm not going to read it out. Have a go now. And there's the answer. And I'll leave it to you to read through the answer. Figure it out yourself.